All right, hello everyone. Um, I'm Zero. I'm joined by Savi, and we're going to be coming this match between Forest and Blue, uh, two of the top players in this tournament. They both have a three-one score right now. Um, Faris PV is a fifty. Uh, 50-49, and Blues is a 51-55, I think. Um, but Blues PB, he got it, I think, just the other day, and, um, and it has a two cycle, an Umu two cycle. So actually, these two players are pretty well matched. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this race. Um... It's not, um, I was just checking through the race times and I saw that Ferris at least, um, is not, you know, like almost every other racer here, is not always playing on personal best pace when it comes to a race, so even though he has about a, uh, over a minute lead in personal best, uh, terms, it's not necessarily a guaranteed loss for Blue here. There's plenty of room, Ferris has gotten a few 52s, 53s. Um, even a 55 during one of the rounds, so I'm excited to see what happens today. Every every race has its own little story, and I'm excited to uh, to be able to tell this one. Yeah, it's something I've noticed a lot actually. Looking through the race times of top runners, is it's really only the very top that are really consistent at it. Um, pretty much everyone else has off days. Yeah. And that's something I actually was thinking of when I was talking about in terms of difficulty of opponent, the difficulty goes up in two ways when you have runners with like better and better PVs. It's both that their speed is better, but also their consistency is usually better because it, that comes with experience. But um, so we are going to see how they're doing here. It looks like both runners are on a pretty decent pace to exit King's Pass. About a 52 from both of them, which is what you want to see. Oh, 51 from Ferris, actually. Great start. It's about as fast as you'd want to get out of there on a, on a in a race. This is also um, quite a consequential match as well, because the winner of this match qualifies for the top 16. Yeah, um, and the loser... Right. The, the loser might qualify. Yeah. I, I think, if I'm looking at it correctly, I think if Forrest wins, Blue will qualify as well, automatically. But if Blue wins, Forrest might have to go through the, um, like, the tiebreaker match. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'd be excited to see Forrest and tiebreakers, but <laughs> I'll hope the best for both of them. Neither one of them got hit on that grudge drop there, which is great. Both entering the the Aspid room on relatively same pace. Hopefully they both get the double spike here. Ferris to... Okay. It looked a little late on that, but it's perfectly fine. Blue goes up and grabs some extra Geo after missing the double spike, which puts him just slightly behind. Yeah, actually both these players have quite a lot of Geo at this point. Um... I think, I don't know what other people are looking for, but I'm looking for like above 15 after False Night Arena is like a nice geo pace. And Blue is on that already. Farish should get that much uh, from the False Night Arena. Yeah, because there's usually at least one husk um, <laughs> that you're able to grab pretty easily. It's really unfortunate when both of them, both the uh, when two husks go to the right there, but. Yeah, um, I don't know how many people are too concerned about exact geo numbers in the early game. Personally, I'm just, I'm just happy to have any amount of geo that's like more than five or something. Like, I'll, I'll notice if I'm really low, but other than that, I'll just be like, okay. But uh, my, my geo collection is not too optimal. I would expect a little better from these two, I suppose. Yeah, it's nice to keep track just because you know that... Um, you can cut things a bit closer sometimes with other geo collection if you ha if you got quite a lot. Um, so just you know saving like little bits of time here and there if you're confident about your geo. And blue does get the kind of bad RNG where the 
The two husks are far to the right there. Didn't get the nail hit to turn around the charging husk. So... He is going to... They are going to have to deal with a little bit less Geo now than Ferris. But, yeah. As you said, both above 15. Not going to be a huge deal. This is actually really nice from Ferris. He's going to get... um. A, a 29 here, I think. Unless he fumbles the pickup. Yeah, yeah that's amazing right. race time. Yeah, it is. Yes. Twenty nine. I mean, he got. I mean, he got everything right. He got a 51 KP. You know, 114 nail. Um, well, entrance, double spike, statue pogo. Good stuff all around. But yeah, that's a, that's that's honestly just uh we expect top runners to have very good early game, but that's that's like a top top level early game, like Pest and Axe and so on and so forth. They're all they're all fine with times like that. I'm like yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, also it's quite common for in a race format for like the first split to be um like a point of failure, right? Just yeah. because you're nervous and because you're used to being able to reset the oh no blue is getting absolutely awful RNG on that, um, so it in a race to get such a good VS time is especially great. Yeah, that was, was was that fourth third or fourth split? split? Yeah, yeah, it's not great there, but um, usually I'm I'm personally hoping that if the Balder doesn't have RNG, it it becomes like a PB normalizer where. The one with the fastest PV gets the most Baldur Spits, but not quite what happened there. Um, it'll be something that is fairly easy for Blue to make up if he plays really well at first, if he's able to capitalize on some mistakes from first. But um, it's just, it'll add a little bit of effort to catching up when he's already behind. Yeah, it's also first. very discouraging. Just mentally. Oh. What was that from Blue? Is that because he's been doing 112 recently? He uh, fireballed the Balder right away. Oh. That's wild, but he just had enough soul to go ahead. Undo the fireball skip. I actually didn't catch that. I'll yeah, both runners cool. make it through this room, collecting at least five soul. Uh, Ferris had a bit more, so he only has to hit those top birds. I reckon Blue will jump up on this platform, kill the ones a little closer. Yep. Ooh, that was a pretty low fireball skip, it looked like. But... Yeah, Green Path has a lot of um, these fireball skips, but it also has a lot of soul collection that you can do quite easily, so it's it's not actually that bad when once you've it out. Yeah, Blue just missed that second fireball skip once. Uh, did cast the fireball, so he's a little low on soul here. He'll either have to collect a little extra before attempting the third one. Or actually, Blue is someone who's practiced the third fireball skip. He can do it with one fireball. Let's see it, Blue. Nope. Ah, not quite. He would, did go for it, though, and I respect that. Oh, he didn't have enough soul on the, the other attempt. Oh, no. That's really unfortunate. Uh, Three fails on that one. Um, much better to just, um, you know, cut it clean and just stop at that point. Yeah, it, that, that one's one of the... That one's the only fireball skip where you have so much extra soul lying around that it's very easy to be tempted into, you know, trying again and again. And if you're just not in the rhythm, it, it does end up costing you even more time to farm up that soul and just keep attempting than it would to just go around. I think it only loses, what, four or five seconds or so to go around, even much less if you get the man pogo. Um, but bo both of the runners here will be farming up soul so that they can kill these moss knights as Ferris is doing here. Looks like he missed a bit of Geo, but I'm, I was totally fine. 305 
should be able to kill this moss charger here for an extra eight or so a little less but he's okay on geo leaving green path with 308 not bad at all yeah forest dealt with that bad rng on the moss knight very well though yeah, they can either spawn far away, as they did for both Ferris and Blue here today, or they can spawn much closer together and you can just fireball them right away. It'll save a bit of time that way, but here we have Ferris going for the Hornet fight. And just kind of doing the damage cycle. It's a pretty basic cycle. Three nail hits, turn around nail hit, fireball um, is the typical pattern. And he got that fairly easy with a 750x cloak here. It's going to put him significantly ahead of blue. Just coming out of green path. Because yeah, blue's starting the fight around the time Ferris is finishing. Yeah, it looks like blue's getting a bit of a better pattern. But he did whiff a fireball there. Um, I think he saved some time on that fight even with the, yeah, the, I'd the reckon. fireball. Uh, she did like the nail throw uh, where she just stands still. And that one's actually really, really good for DPS. Mm hmm yeah you just get so much time for the farm up soul and even after shooting fireball it's pretty fantastic uh, attack unfortunately the only the only downside would be that you can't really double her while she's doing that um but you still get tend to get those cycles anyway because it doesn't add to her stagger counter but both of our runners will be making their way to a movement heavy split the, the uh, Mantis Claw split, I almost called it the Explosion Pogo split, because that is that is a split where we do that trick, but not necessarily the important bit. Ooh, Ferris with a very clean drop. Barely touches any of the platforms. Interesting, he also chooses to go bottom route in this room. Um, not many people do that, actually. Yeah, I've heard that it's, a, it's kind of a uh, risk strategy, because it is... I think guaranteed slower if you get poor RNG on these mushrooms here because then you have to farm soul elsewhere that you would already have from up there but uh if you get the good RNG on the mushrooms they spawn right next to each other and you can just go for a single nail hit and insta kill them anyway Ooh, he actually does the no inventory drop there which I believe was determined to be fastest strat to go through that room yeah, it's interesting. He did like an air walk at the start of the room to um, like uh, avoid getting bounced too high on the mushrooms. Woo! The Wii Pogo. Yeah, I've like seen that. Yeah, showing off a bit of French pride here. Uh, going for the damage tank. That is one of the fastest ways to get up there. I believe there's a slightly faster way that only absolute mad people would do, but... Weepo goes as close as it gets, and from what I hear, fairly consistent. Not quite as hard as some people would think. Just as the explosion pogo looks deceptively difficult, but... At least on this patch, not too bad. Yeah, that was a very clean segment for Ferris in general. He had, I think, a little bit of a movement flub. He got a hard fall in the very first room. You know, when you do the, um, the inventory drop and then the pogo on the statue. Other than that, that, that oh, was a really clean one. split. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, he didn't, definitely didn't get a hard fall during the fungal drop, but yeah, no, that one. Okay. I did, I, I did miss that, but yeah, other than that, I didn't I didn't see a single mistake there. Oh, and just barely misses that Aspid. You want to start farming up soul for the Grudge Mother. You want six hits leading up to her. Um, missing that Aspid won't do much. It'll just mean that Jennifer has to die. He really tried to hit that Vengefly to spare Jennifer, but he couldn't get it. He hit it a second time. He knew that Jennifer's life was on the line. He went for two nail hits, uh, losing a little bit of time there in the process. I think getting a second nail hit off that guy is faster than killing Jennifer as well. Uh, but, he, well but he just missed it. Yeah, so... Jennifer does die, and he'll lose a little bit of time here. No big deal, though. Uh, he'll go for three nail fireballs here. Oh, I, that second nail cancel was so fast, I barely even saw the nail swing come out. I wasn't quite sure. But he does make that cycle, and he'll now be going for the cleanup, murdering as many babies as he possibly can. 
with these two fireballs. That was a pretty nice fight and a decent cleanup as well. Yeah, it was. That can go very poorly. Uh, look, look our blue screen. Yeah, that's kind of the worst thing that you can get is when she floats just up into the ceiling. Um, yeah. And he, he, you know, some people will try and like get up, get above her and pogo her there, but Blue was kind of sitting on the ground, so he couldn't do Ooh, that. Oh, a perfect Wait. cleanup. Yeah, from him, though. that's really nice. Yeah. Well so he'll lose a little bit of time on the fight, but he'll save time on the cleanup, I think. Just a little bit. Those little amounts can add up. After after all, I think the, the only significant time loss for Blue has been uh, that third fireball skipping up. Or uh, a little bit the second one as well. Forrest actually but messed up a bit there. He... Um... <laughs> approaching the shade he like did some bad movement and then couldn't hit it in time so he then did like a double pogo shade skip that's really weird oh my goodness okay oh, I, 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 i'm glad you're catching all these little details here but uh it looks like blue will get up there as well and first will maintain that lead he's a pretty much a full blue lake ahead of blue right now which there's a little, a little too many blues in one sentence for me, but I said it anyway. Um, Rixian pointing out that they have been 25 seconds apart since the Moth and Cloak split. There was no change in Fungal Waste, so actually, really clean, really clean Fungal from Blue as well. We didn't mention too much of that. Blue does apparently save one second entering Blue Lake. Yeah, I wouldn't exactly call, you know, this this difference a commanding lead yet because this split dash slash shade soul and then going into sanctum can be you know a, pretty much a complete mess if things go wrong um but it's definitely nice to be 25 seconds ahead here yeah for sure um on one hand the leads do tend to feel a lot more commanding when the when the, the so so to speak the uh the more experienced player, the overdog, or whatever you want to call them, is the one with that lead. Um, the, the up dog? The up dog, yeah. What's up dog? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, 25 seconds at the end of the day can be mitigated by bad soul master RNG uh, for Ferris here. Does go preemptively up into that hallway to grab that geo. Wasn't I didn't quite see how much he got from there, if any. But um <laughs> But other than that, he does collect the a good amount of geo, should be leaving on the very healthy number of seven thirty-four. About thirty geo over the bare minimum that you would want here. Not enough to skip hoppers, but enough to uh, basically guarantee that his city exit will be nice and safe. Not too much uh, time loss grabbing Geo from Husks. Does go the upper platform through that um, Bellfly room. Saves a little bit of time there over going into the water. I really like the movement in that room. And uh, it's good that you mentioned the, him going into the corridor after Gorgeous Husk as well. Because Blue did the exact same thing. Um... Both these players experienced enough to have lost lots of Geo in that tiny little corridor before and very wary about it, I think. Yeah, and, and honestly, it is just so frustrating to try and collect all the Geo at the bottom and then, like, start the quit out and then look and see that, like, 7, th or, or sorry, three 390 number and go like, oh god, I'm missing 30 Geo somewhere and I have to close the menu and go back and get it. Uh, I, I definitely can see the merits of just preemptively jumping into that hallway and not bothering at all with that process. Yeah, like by the time the Geo has ticked up and by the time you've no noticed it, it, it might be too late. Yeah, that's true. Quitting out <laughs> quitting out while missing that Geo can be very punishing. Having to kill extra hoppers or even aspids to make up for it. This is a really nice pace for Ferris, by the way. Um... I think that was a 14-1x dash slash time. Good lord, he's a monster. Although, uh, 
apparently Blue is making up seconds here and there. Um, that's I, that's pretty impressive, considering he's going up against. Um, it, is, it is super impressive, especially considering that, you know, Ferris has had this lead and we've been commending him the entire run for how clean he is, but Blue's just been playing slightly cleaner for the past two splits and keeping it even for the split before that. So it's really been only one one major difference between these runners, and that's been Green Path. Hopefully, we can see... Well, I don't want to. I don't want to hope for bad things from Ferris, but like at this point, Ferris is playing so cleanly. Like he, he needs bad things to happen to him to catch up, because Blue is playing so cleanly as well. But he's not not gaining enough time to really make a sig significant difference. But I do hope this race gets a little closer, or at least it stays that way. Blue does take two hits of damage. It looks like he's going to take a third. Um. Oh man, going in. Yeah. He's made the decision to go through. Some people would go and take the bench on two HP. It looks like he might be trying to find a couple of places to heal. Um, definitely one on the on the Shade Soul Elevator is going to be available. But healing anywhere in the Soul Sanctum means your Soul Management will be a little worse. Won't quite have optimal damage in some section or optimal safety. If that's what you'd rather go for. Yeah, so. I think Blue is the kind of guy to play to win. He's taking a heal here. Um, he might not heal again, actually. Um, just... He, he wants to play cleanly and make up this time that way. Oh, he, he might heal now after that. That's unfortunate, yeah. Um, but you, you really don't want in these situations for time loss to run away with you and you to spend more time recovering from a, a mistake than the mistake lost in the first place um, yeah and even as i as i mentioned that soul management being a little worse in soul sanctum can be so punishing like I, I blue went for some nail hits that i think he otherwise would have avoided probably would have just gone with two vengeful spirits and ended up having the soul the soul twister teleport away from him and make that extra trouble for him where he took extra damage anyway and had to heal a second time ferris got a fairly clean soul warrior or yeah soul warrior. it was actually really rough yeah yeah uh he didn't what you normally want is just to get the four nail hits and two doubles i um, yeah I, I, he actually I, didn't double the first one i don't think oh, so okay. he had to spend an extra shade soul I was looking a little bit of blue. I only saw the two shade souls, but I must have missed. Because I know everyone has their own different methods here. Some people... Yeah, blue has to go for three shade souls as well, and they'll be leaving on zero soul. Which means they'll have to do a little extra farming here in order to get the amount of soul that you'd want for soul master. Ferris hopefully going to be able to show off this quick kill here from the soul master. Going to want... Yeah, he got two fireballs, but Soulmaster gave him the bad RNG, a quick dive. He does get one double here, but Soulmaster's really giving him... Oh! Gave him some rough RNG, but he was able to mitigate that quite well. That was a very fast fight, considering he didn't get the uh, fastest possible start. Or the fastest follow-up attack, or anything there, really. Yeah, it's really nice that Shade Soul just deals so much damage that... Um... There are a lot of different patterns for Soul Master that will end up in a, you know, decent fight. Um, he can absolutely troll you sometimes, but it's rare that it's a complete troll. Oh my word, Blue, please. Um, he's probably not going to heal here, but I hope he takes his time in second phase, because this can be really scary here. Players usually want to go for two nail hits on every dive, and that puts you very close to getting hit by Soul Master. Yeah, there's a few strategies to do that as well. Some players will jump, will dash away. But... He's really still going for both hits. A little nervously, not quite getting the rhythm for the second hit on those dives. Ooh, yeah, and does make... Oh, you know, he farmed some extra soul so he could heal. I was confused what he was doing there. All right, that makes sense. Uh, you can heal right before you collect the dive because you'll get the full 
soul refill as soon as the spell is fully collected. And being on 1 HP leaving Sanctum is, it can be a little rough with these follies that Ferris is dealing with right now. Um, there's some, some husks that they'll be killing on the way out as well that can get in the way. Actually, Ferris might not be killing those husks. He's actually on really good Geo here. Yeah, has about tw a 20 Geo lead over blue. Oh no, blue, please. This is really good. Yeah, okay. That's a really scary uh, place right there. You could He could have very easily gotten hit a second time. Yeah, it's really the capstone on... Uh, it's really the capstone on Soul Sanctum RNG is that Folly can spawn in slightly earlier. And if you mess up just a little bit of movement, all of a sudden you, you take a hit and you're kind of trapped in a corner with it. And so Blue did quite well getting out there. Yeah, also having to carry this health all the way to the bench is really annoying sometimes. Uh, yeah. He's not going to heal though. Um, he, he, he seems confident, I guess. Or may, maybe not confident. Maybe he just knows he can't take the time right now. Yeah. It was, you know, it was something we'll be keeping in mind for pretty much the remainder of the run. So I won't be saying it again, but every time you heal, that's a lost spell that you could be using somewhere and the boss fights that can mean a whole lot and in terms of just general gameplay it can mean enemies won't be out of your way in this case it would make it harder to farm up the geo that you we need for oh my goodness that shade soul only killed two of the husks it's really unfortunate for blue there um he will have plenty of geo but yeah they, they want to kill some husks on the way out of here so that they have 300 geo so they can go to the king station where ferris is right now pay up the geo finish work th that that'll be the end of ferris geo worries the rest of the geo will come straight from the watch knight chest and a couple of devouts right at the end not too much to worry about unless you lose all of your geo at which point uh you've probably <laughs> given up uh, any chance any opportunity to win a race anyway two deaths and losing all your geo not quite what we would call fast. But Blue will be making his way towards Ferris. Uh, Ferris's uh, last known position in the queen. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice recovery there. Um, yeah, the, the extra Geo didn't actually save that much time for Ferris because he had so much that he he really didn't get to skip anything. He like he still did the, um, the Shade Soul in the top room and the dive on the dive floor um and blue just had to walk left a little bit after the dive floor and shade saw right again yeah only a three second uh addition to to blue's uh timer there or the, to the difference between them according to rixian most of that actually probably from the small slip ups in the sanctum uh bumping into that folly there uh, we'll be seeing both runners enter the Crystal Peaks. This is a very tense area. A death here is, uh, at least at this level, pretty typically the end of the race. But uh, <laughs> not necessarily if you're zero, apparently. Yeah, I Taking mean, a if, for a race like this, I think that probably would be the end of it. Um, uh, that is that a little first, more balanced. In that race first, Jeff, I had, you know, a little bit of a time lead to work with um i think for either of these players probably any death is very likely to end it yeah that's they would have to both die probably yeah there are some deaths that would cost barely any time one of them though they've already made it past basically uh the soul like death after soul master loses 20 30 seconds but other than that, yeah, pretty much every death is going to cost more than a minute, which would be the entire lead for Ferris right now, so. Yeah, Ferris got a very nice god cycle there, if you're paying attention to the Crystal Peak movement. Let's see yeah. Blue, how Blue deals with um, Pogax and god cycle room here. Yeah, I did see Ferris go for Pogax. Did see him go for either God Cycle or God Pixel. I always, I have a, I have a very difficult time distinguishing between them visually. Uh, see what blue does here. Oh, Ooh. very, very late laser on that guy, yeah. 
I don't yeah. think that was that was gonna work, sadly. Absolutely trolled. Ferris does go for the damage cycle because he's on five HP here, he's feeling comfortable with himself. Losing HP here in any percent is not a huge deal just because you quit out right after. In this category, they have to go get dive, uh, which is a dangerous split. But with five, with 4 HP, it's going to be quite easy, uh, especially considering how much they've practiced this upcoming section. Which is mostly it, just crusher cycles and dark room. Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like early on in the tournament, I saw a lot of people taking hits in peak and then doing damage the cycle in order to like mitigate that but further on i feel like i've seen people just get cleaner at peaks and then oh wow Blue, yeah he just Blue did just the, do double that. dash wow yeah Why? <laughs> not only does he have dash slash but he had soul for a fireball there that's just pure swag wow what an absolute legend um for for those wondering uh, you can either use a dash slash or a fireball to air stall there. Dash slash is most typical for all skills. And according to Trinket in the chat, that's actually Blue's signature move. Apparently we should have expected that from him. Uh, always maintaining that soul there. It would mean that if he took uh, any extra hits in this upcoming section, he would have enough soul to heal here. Um, or, and if he doesn't, it means that he'll save some soul. Or, I mean, well, not, not necessarily saving soul, because this isn't any percent, but... <laughs> it, it, it's some nice swag. Ferris made it through the dark room with a dash-only strats, by the way. Um, the fastest strat to make it through the dark room is going to show off our early control here. <laughs> Sliding off into those spikes. We'll see what blue does. I assume dash only. Maybe single C dash? Nope, dash only. Love to see it. Yeah, I believe the dash only strat saves about 5 seconds over like the full C dash one. I'm not sure about like the the different variations in between. Maybe just a couple of seconds, but it, it's it, that that room should be consistent. So it's it's a nice time save when you learn it. Um, not that I've never <laughs> messed up that room in my life, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm very glad to see both runners make it through without too many mishaps, because falling into the spikes usually means you have to reset the room and, and go back in. And it's just, it, it can be hard to reorientate yourself, hard to trust yourself if you make a mistake. But fortunately, both avoid that. And now Ferris is on to the Dream Nail split, which Blue will just be starting that split. Ferris is already in the dream nail sequence, I should say. This might actually be close to PB pace here. Um, looking at his splits, he got dream nail at 2540 in his PB. I think he might actually be ahead. Oh, wow. What? The, Ooh. the, the underplat strat there, he almost fell off. That's oh. kind of scary. Yeah, it would be about seven Is second he... time loss if you if you fall in. Yeah, I think so... he's actually quite a bit ahead of PB right now. Blue mentioning he feels like he threw the early game again. It's it was really only the green path split, and then I guess he had some trouble in Soul Sanctum split or Shade Soul split. But other than that, he has had a, a fairly clean race. It's just. Very hard to compare against Ferris, who's, yeah, on personal best pace when he already has a 50xx. Yeah, I think Blue is definitely, um... <laughs> what, what's the word? He's, uh, you know, comparing himself to Ferris's bests when actually he's doing a pretty good job. Um, I think what, one of the things about I guess he's watching the race um, since he's in chat. One of the things about watching is that you don't actually see the full race. You're only looking every so often. So it's very easy for you to see your own mistakes against someone else's successes and, you know, not the other way around. Yeah. First, in the meantime, starting off the Watcher Knight fight, he got some pretty bad RNG at the start. They both, these watches are being extremely rude. Both of them, both so far, of. Uh, 
both phases of the Watcher Knights have started off with a roll, which is the worst thing you could possibly get in all skills. You want them to stick together so that they can both tank that full damage D-Dark. Oh, okay. Well, with that roll, it does actually bring them quite close. Oh, he's just getting knocked out of his spell cast. Oh, and he very, very nicely calculated damage there. Knew that that Shade Soul would finish it off. Yeah, the D-Dark steal 88 damage and an AoE, so having them stack up together, just three D-Darks is all it really takes to finish them off. I think a single nail hit of them that, um, which is very easy to get. We'll see if Blue can get any better RNG here. Open up with a nail attack, which does mean he gets the fastest possible first, one, first night. Blue actually starts on the left side here and then makes his way back over to the right. They do stack up nicely for them. Oh, but it bounced just slightly out of the range of its first D-Dark. This is a pretty nice pattern from the final, guys. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Rolled a bit away. He, he didn't react to that very quickly, but that was a good pattern overall. Better than Forrest's fight, I think. He should actually save some time here. Yeah, and those those little time saves can come in handy when you're when the time's just been slipping away as it has been to first pretty insane pace here. It's it's hard hard to say the time is slipping away so much as Ferris is just kind of pulling it out of the air, so to speak. I mean, it'd be fantastic to witness a top five uh, personal best here, which could be what we're looking at if we have a significant. PB from Ferris, but I will try not to jinx it too hard. We still have Umu to get through and Hornet too. I mean, Ferris, next obstacle is actually the Isma skips, which can be quite... Not not a consistent... They're, they're consistent tricks, but it, it, depending on the day, it's very easy to just slip up and miss a spike tunnel skip. Ferris actually leaving on a little less Geo than I think most... Or not Geo, Soul than most people would want. Means you won't be able to yeah. fireball the worm. Yeah, I mean this would be a problem for me. Uh, he seems uh, prepared for the situation, though. I guess he just doesn't go for it. Um, messing up spike tunnel once, but that's not such a bad mistake. No, not at all. Some people uh, have this phenomenon where they either get it first try or fifth try, and he avoids that. Oh, oh my and word. he does get wormed fully. Yeah. Punter. I did. Does that count as a curse? Did, did we curse that? I mean, it's kind of inevitable that it happens to people, right? Yeah. When you uh, play fire. I'm gonna say I'm gonna. I, I gotta say I'm not gonna take the blame for that one. If you leave this room with less than three soul, that's on you. Um. But uh, not to be too harsh to him. It's, it's it's quite possible, especially with race nerves. I mean, he's been playing so well, but it. it it's hard to tell how much that fact is in. I mean, some people really just don't uh, don't go for it. Um, like Axe, for example, only fireballs if he ha just happens to have tons of soul. Um, so I think he's just he's just in PB mode, maybe, where he's thinking, mm. you know, if I can save time, I'm gonna save time. Yeah. Well, in any case, that does put. That does take off quite a bit of time for him. Put him on 2 HP, which brings him to the danger zone. I was interesting to see him fireball there, and he still ended up getting hit. So he, I, I guess he was trying to make sure that he made it through. That he made it through there with the C dash, but yeah, it didn't quite clean up. Oh, yeah, it looks there. like Blue saved quite a bit of time. Uh, thanks for that cleaner ismas. Yeah, we 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 kind of glanced over the uh, the ismas skips just because of that that warp. But uh, other than that, there was a there was an early control there where both of them hit a warp, got slight, got a uh, knocked out of the ismas dialogue box a little bit earlier. It saves a significant amount of seconds there. 
not quite sure on the exact time, but it is worth going for if you have the HP for it. Yeah, Apparently, yeah, we're just gonna wait on Paris. Yeah, fully offline. Okay, he's back. These things do happen. Technology yeah. problems. Hopefully, we won't have to call our volunteer to get it back. It'll just kind of reboot itself. Should be giving it about twenty more seconds. I want to say, just so it can catch up with all the stream delays. Yeah, he's gonna end up warping in. I think having finished the broken vessel fight, maybe, so we won't get to see his Morlocks. Oh, just Ooh. about to start it. Nice. Um, let's see how what good RNG he gets here. What you want, what you want, um, broken vessel to do is just basically immediately headbang, because uh, that's the attack that you can get the best DPS on. Are we certain that's RNG? Because from what I've understood, if you get the double hit, it's almost guaranteed. I, the 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 the, the two double hits the fair started the fight with there. He will usually headbang pretty early, but I've had him just kind of flail around the room. <laughs> Quite well, a lot be... before doing it. Yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah, that'd be frustrating for sure. But um, Blue did make it through the Molochs fairly cleanly. Does go for base and skip. I think he got a second try. Either that or he abandoned it very quickly. Blue also starts off that fight with that double. Means the second double is guaranteed as well. And yeah, he's... Just as you said... Ooh, Blue, I believe, just knocked him out of the headbang? Maybe not. Yeah, he's... And a Blue second is... time, yeah. This Blue is actually is... A, a bad fight, unfortunately. Even though he's getting stagger locked, you really don't want that. Um, yeah. It actually slows it down quite a bit. It's quite rough. Didn't, we didn't get to see how Faris did at base and skip or Morlocks, but it looks like he had a better time of it than Blue. Uh, we'll see what the the comparison looks like after they pick up wings. First is making his way to Hornet 2, which is that that first boss fight created a fairly significant not not a significant difference, but will will definitely add to Ferris's advantage. Um, but Hornet 2 could easily take take it away from him. Oh, he does dash here and go for that safety bench just in case he dies. The camp bench is will save even more time if you die, but it takes about 10 seconds to go for, maybe 15. Uh, so, is, I believe, the safest to take without the significant time loss. Yeah, I'm... I, I don't know how I feel about the benches, because like I said, I think at this point, if either of these racers die, that's probably the end of the race unless the other person also dies. Um, so I, I guess I would skip it, but I, I it's it, it takes like barely any time to get, so I guess it, it's not a bad choice. Uh, Blue just see dashes right out of there. I didn't notice if he went for the basin bench, actually. You can get a, a bench in the hidden station that costs almost no time to get just because you're waiting for the stag anyway. And you can access the platform from the right side where the bench is, but we'll focus on this Hornet 2 fight from Ferris. Yeah, looks like, um, thanks to that Ismas, I guess, he'll need a pretty good fight here if, to, if he wants to stay on PB pace. And so yeah. far, that, I think he's only it's, managed it's okay one double. double. Yeah. Hornet fights have a habit of either improving really fast or getting really bad really fast. This is a nice couple doubles, actually. Yeah, this is getting pretty good now. Mm, that Miss Shade Soul will cost him, though. But yeah, not not a slow fight at all. Yeah, that turned out actually uh, fairly decent as far as Hornet fights go. I think Blue gets a very him. early double there. Oh, Blue just walks into Hornet twice there. Not 
quite what you want to see, but uh, with an experienced runner, I would ex Ooh, and gets a Shade Soul Parry right in his face. That 2 HP is looking kind of scary. I do... I don't want to see him slow down, though. I want to see him keep going. Yeah, and he's still going for those doubles. He's not healing on staggers or anything. Blue, I really got to admire him when it... When stuff starts going wrong, he really just keeps going for maximum speed, not healing in Soul Sanctum, not healing or slowing down for Hornet on 2 or even 1 HP. Very admirable yeah. performance. You gotta love that can blue attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the famous British humor I've heard so much about? Oh yeah, it's awful, isn't it? <laughs> I enjoyed it for one. But speed gaming, I have to say, uh, shout outs to every speed gaming channel that's rating us right now. I think I saw three speed gaming raids in the last like 10 minutes or so. Welcome to all the raiders. We heard Ferris versus Blue. Ferris is somewhat significantly ahead, uh, just barely under a minute ahead, actually. It would take, I would say, probably a death for Blue to catch up at this point. Uh, even a uh, missed Umu 1 cycle, even a 3 cycle, wouldn't be quite enough to make up that difference. And other than that, there's not too many significant time losses uh, in the near f in the foreseeable future. It's definitely possible for gaps like this to close, but against Forest, um, that would be a pretty impressive, you know, just to make up so much time in movement. Um, like, stuff like... Hera can be pretty volatile if you, you know, take a few hits, uh, Abyss Climb, Hollow Knight Fight, but it's just, it doesn't quite add up. Um, yeah. Yeah, unless, unless Ferrist, you know, really has a, a few bad segments. Um, Yeah, and especially with how well Ferris has been playing too, it really decreases the likelihood of that happening. Uh, yeah, I think, Blue, I think Ferris is now tied with PB, actually, just as an update from Cyclone Slash. Yeah, it's always nice to see some race PBs, but... I wouldn't count on it too much, there's still significant, uh significant portion of the rate of the route ahead. As we've already mentioned, Umu, Hera splits, both somewhat volatile. It looks like first stream might have cut out again right as it faded to black. We have him on incognito, zooming on his way to Umu. Just imagine the C dash here. Ooh, I can imagine a C dash glitch where he got hit by oh, the. Oh, don't no, don't curse him. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. That was actually some really clean movement from Blue. Um, I think he's still about a minute behind, though, unfortunately. Yeah, the, the Cyclone split is really just a short bit of movement here. Oh, it looks like he didn't get Tick Tick. He's on full HP. I uncursed him uh, by cursing him preemptively. Usually... He ended that C dash. I'm not sure what happened there. No, that's the movement. That's the that, movement? Yeah, that's what you do now. You do dashes in that room. Because you like. You C dash the whole previous room. I see. Yeah, it's like a whole new thing. Alright. You're, you're, you're a boomer, Savvy. I am a boomer. That's true. It does manage to come into the fight on full soul. So what they want to do is lure Umu down a little farther here, right onto this platform, then they'll jump back up, flutter over Umu a little bit, make sure he gets just above this platform that he's standing on right now, then fall off the ledge to the left, shade soul twice, dash in, three, four, push Umu out, two shade souls should finish him off. That is the perfect one cycle. That was absolutely textbook. He even got the perfect RNG on the attacks. Two short, one long. Um, that's 
going to be really hard for blue to match, honestly. Yeah. Both both the RNG and the execution part of that fight. Yeah, I mean it's hard to it's it's hard to improve upon like the best possible outcome, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah to even match it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the reason you want the short, short, long is that the long allows you to get into position just very easily, whereas if you get a short attack, you have to deal with these electrical balls right in the path of where you'd want to be jumping. And yeah, that's a long attack, then a short one, and yeah, now a long one. Looked like blue lured Umu a little farther to the left than some would. I hope that's okay. Yeah, looks like the bus is pretty low as well. Oh no, he missed the first Shade Soul. Yeah, that kills it, unfortunately. He was just a little bit too early on that first Shade Soul. Oh, blue typing in chat and frustrated. Yeah. Not what he wanted to see when he's already 50 seconds behind, but... Oh! Okay, I was a little nervous we'd be seeing a 3 cycle. But, um... A good clean up there from blue that it could have gone even worse. Murray calling out Ferris for a boomer left side exit, which I would assume left side exit is faster. So I would assume he's saying that he did the left side exit in a different way than they currently do. Which maybe doesn't yeah. save as much time. I think Ferris strats are just a couple weeks too old for Marie. Uh, gotta keep up to date or you may as well be one of these ancient runners who have been running for three years. Weak old strat, better be in your runs tomorrow. Joke, of course. But, um... Ferris is making his way to the Great Slash Split. Blue, or through the Great Slash Split, he's already there. Blue, trying to catch up to him, just starting that out. The, this whole split's just a bunch of sea dashes, really, and, and dashing. Not too much goes on. Uh, soul farming doesn't matter at all for once. Uh, because they quit out right after and they lose all of that. And there's no real enemies in the way or geo collection, so to speak, of just making it through there. Ferris gets the fast cycle there. Love to see it. Yeah, I've been really impressed with his movement throughout this race. I mean, it, it, it goes without saying, you know, as a 30xx runner, he has good movement because this category is all movement when you get uh, down to that kind of level um, but he's yeah he's really showing off um, and I I hate to oh blue please I hate to nag on blue but the movement seems to be a big part of the difference here um, in that you know blues made a few mistakes and lost some time um, oh yeah but, like that falling down but the... the reason that the race is sort of running away with him is because he can't save back any time against Ferris because his movement is just not as good. Yeah, it's 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 been it's been a rough race for Blue. And you know what? He's still going to finish with a time that's pretty far ahead of the majority of runners. So it's not as if he's just been playing terribly, it's just by comparison not too much to not too much of time to save anywhere on Ferris run, and any any sort of mistakes in addition to that are going to put you this far behind. Yeah, I would I would not f feel happy going into a race against Ferris, let alone if I knew ahead of time that he was going to be playing at pretty much his best. So this is a really tough race to be in for Blue. Yeah, I would like to see just how many uh, 50xx times we had uh, in races at the end of the tournament. I, was, I, I looked and it, even 
even Monster and Pisces have not been consistently getting those 50xx times. So yeah, just just X somehow has insane consistency. <laughs> yeah, he really does. Um, it's always been his selling point, so to speak, as a runner. And what makes him so intimidating to race against. He'll get world record uh, the day before a race, and then in, in the day of the race, get a time that would have been world record before that. Um, he's absolutely insane, but... In any case, I would like to see if Ferris does get a 50, some sort of stat... So where that would put him just on a uh, tournament leaderboard, so to speak, of race times. Um, I actually have some times up for something I've been working on. Um, yeah, actually, I think that was your graphic that I saw all yeah. those all those times on. I just realized like, that was Axe and Pisces have both got forty nines, and then Monster. And Valignatev as well has got 50s, but getting a 50 in this tournament, I, I think if he, finishes, if he finishes with a 50, he'd be like, I think top 5 in the tournament leaderboard, I guess. Because like, players like Murray, Sauer, Viz, Homothity haven't actually gotten 50s in this tournament. Yeah. Even though, and even though they're capable. Yeah, and that just shows how hard it is to have that level of consistency. Um, there's just so much that can go... I mean, it's an hour-long run. There's so many places where you can lose, you know, 10 seconds or so, and just... it'll As it builds up over time, it really puts that 50 out of a reasonable range, but Ferris has been managing to keep it going. And Ferris, by the way, I did want to mention, actually did miss the... Ah, what is the phrase? It's a damage warp. The the it's oh, not a thorn yeah. warp. Yeah. The hazard warp. He missed thing. The hazard warp. He yeah. missed it once. So he did take an extra hit of damage and he took a second extra hit somewhere. Uh normally you'd be on four HP here. Being on two HP can be a bit scary if you're not used to the devout. I would I would expect Ferris to be used to it. So I'm not too nervous for him. Yeah, I guess that might put PB pace a bit further away. When I checked in at our rates, he was actually again tied with PB, so um, he might well be behind now. Yeah, I'd reckon about four seconds for a missed da uh, hazard hazard warp there. So unless he has something similar in his personal bust. Oh. Blue just barely missing his C dash, but realizing in time to <laughs> knock up that moss that moss creep away from him. Ooh, does dash right into that um, mantis youth, I believe, or Petra. Oh, he wanted to C dash there, but he saw that the boomerang was coming from the quick reactions here from Blue, realizing that he's not quite where, exactly where he wants to be both times. We'll be coming okay. in. Oh. Ferris is now six six seconds behind his PB. Um, I don't know his PB well enough to know if that's doable throughout the rest of this race. I mean that there is stuff left to do the whole of Abyss, but um, maybe a player of his caliber has, you know, an Abyss in his PB that's six seconds. You know, that doesn't have six seconds to save in it. Yeah, and the Hollow Knight can also just be so volatile in the RNG. A Scream Skip can save a significant amount of time, so if he doesn't have a Scream Skip in his run, that can be a big difference maker. Okay, okay. Uh, it was a little hard for me to see what happened to Blue there. He did get hit by the spider, but he manages to get out fairly cleanly. Oh my yes! god! <laughs> Fourth under plat. My Let's heart went into go. my throat there. Why does he do this? Fourth under plat is my favorite under plat. It absolutely kills your run if you fall there, especially if you don't know the dark room, which is required to escape a fall into. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say that it's a. Uh, ah, what's her name? 
I, I forget this character's name every time. I keep thinking like brood mother, but oh, oh yeah, the um, the midwife, midwife's midwife, territory. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Thank you, chat uh, and Zero. Looks like Blue actually was a little worried there. He killed the devout and then took a step back, um, because he was on two HP. Zenkar, I will defend myself saying I did not forget the character. I forgot her name. Midwife is a wonderful character. I love her too. But sorry, sir, go ahead. Yeah, about a 1 minute 40 difference between them, so absolutely Faris has to die. Uh, please don't, but <laughs> what? <laughs> as soon as I said that, he takes damage. Um, please don't yeah. die, but in order for blue, Faris has to die. Did he just did miss? He miss yeah, he may pull. Oh my god! All right. <laughs> Let's not axe it here. Let's get that. There we go. I don't think I've ever seen someone miss that. Ah, uh, yeah. Not three times in a row for sure. Oh, is that is that a famous axe moment? Yes. <laughs> Six seconds lost on uh, personal best face. It's quite the meme. Um, we do know that Axe did come back in the end, though, for the world record, but... Oh, it was worth it. It was worth it for the meme that he contributed. He does make it through there, uh, fairly decently. Uh, the, the, uh, through the whole split, I should say, fairly decently. Um, other than that, Miss Lover Skip. Miss Lover Skip, Miss Lover. Uh, he, the he summer climb wasn't quite as fast. He lover skipped, that's true. Blue getting the swag door. Looked like a little late on swag door, actually, but... Swag either way. Blue's, blue has a lot of swagger in this. Uh, how many underplats has Blue gone for? If we've been keeping track, did he go for the hazard underplat? Did not see that. I feel like if you go for fourth underplat, you surely go for every other underplat. If you're going to go for the underplat that loses time and potentially costs you your entire run if you fail it, like, surely you go for dream underplat, which only costs seven seconds or so. Wow, yeah, what about, that what was about the, the hazard warp underplat, though? The hazard warp one? I think that's free. I think that's great. Okay, I think Faris is actually seven seconds behind now. Oof. So I guess he he lost a second to that slightly sketchy lighthouse climb. This blue. Yeah, he blue. might not be able to PB this now. Mm. And that's rough. But to be able, oh, oh wow, that'll almost yeah, certainly be it. Yeah, that's a classic. Sadly, it really is. But blue, I do want to commend them for that sibling climb. By the way, he took a hit, but huge. He got right back on that horse, and he, he rode it straight to the top of that lighthouse. Oh my goodness, this pogo there just barely saving Ferris from yet another spike damage tank. Mm. Yeah, nerves, The nerves getting to him, I think, or maybe the Crawlids being a little off cycle. I actually so recover for a triple spike. don't really like that strat that he was doing on the, the two... Um... Like the two line blocks, then next yeah. to each other with the spikes in the bottom, he was like pogoing the spikes between them. I don't. I really don't like that. Yeah, I do. I do prefer the jump method, and I do think it's actually faster because it yeah. might save some frames on the spikes. I, I, I feel like it is as well. Um, like the the jumps, it looks sketchy, but actually, when you try it, just kind of jumping between them is really really safe and fast as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe he does it. He was like trying to go for an extra hit on the Shadow Creeper on the left, but I, I mean, he is coming into this fight with almost full soul, but I feel like that's not. I I don't think that's worth it. Yeah, and even though he does make a few mistakes on the Abyss climb, I'd love to hype up Blue and say that he can make up a lot of time there, which he can, but. I mean, Blue is 20 seconds or so behind on the timer, as well as being a full, like, Abyss Climb behind. Not really an opportunity to make up for it there.
Yeah, look at that strat that Blue's doing. I find that a lot easier. Um, this is really clean so far. Yeah. Go on, show off. I'm going to see a Poco here. Oh, and he gets the nice setup for the triple spike as well. This is an IL level abyss climb. That was perfect. I love it. Yeah, round of applause for that. That was great. Um, we're really showing off at the end of the race. Oh, just misses the fucking wing. The, the wings input right at the end. A little unfortunate, but... um. Ferris here is starting off the Hollow Knight fight. He's going to try to Abyss Shriek the Hollow Knight as much as possible. Going to start off with one here. He has extra soul from the funky Abyss climb that he did. He's damage tanking a little bit, which is pretty typical for this fight. He's getting a lot of Shriek damage here. I mean a lot. Oh, he does go for a dive there. And second dive. Dive is not quite optimal damage, but he's pumped out so much already. Yeah, maybe just being on 3 HP is low enough to not want to take too many chances. Oh, he can get a Scream Skip here for sure. I was just thinking that he might have over damaged that last phase. Yeah! Let's go. Oh, wow. That was so close to the, the 50 in the end. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit over. It was, I think it was the, the Abyss Dunks that did it. it really that's a was. Really great race time i mean like like we said very few races have finished with a 50 anyway so this still puts him amongst the best yeah and far ahead of his uh of what was his original seed time and that's something i like to keep track of just how much progress everyone has made over the course of this tournament um most runners being minutes ahead of where they started the tournament at and uh, just being able to finish a race time over what used to be your PB is a pretty great feeling. Yeah, and actually Blue will end up finishing with a pretty good time compared to his PB as well anyway. Uh, assuming the rest of this fight goes smoothly. Button there. Just trying to mark our winners down. <laughs> One sec. Oh, you already did it. Thank you. Yeah, he got a few, um, a few, uh, yeah, those dashes in this fight. Um, it's kind of s slows you down quite a bit because you really just want to stand under him and shriek. That's a great time, too, uh, from Blue. I think this would have been very close to PB had he not PB'd a few days ago. Yeah, Blue actually, I think he said that his, blue, that his PB he just got this morning. But, um, honestly, 40 seconds off of PB isn't bad at all either. Um, which I believe, yeah, it's going to be about that far off of what his current time is, which is 51, 55. So, good game to both races. Can't wait to have them both in there, in here to talk about that one. Be sure to leave questions in chat if we have anything that we want to clear up. Looks from his splits, yeah, like, first was actually ahead Lost ahead of Grey Slash. Um, and he, I think he had potential to PB as well up until the Abyss Climb. That's really unfortunate. Wow, he was 16 seconds ahead of his PB at one point. That's amazing. Yeah, we'll talk about that for sure. Um, other stuff we gotta ask, I feel. Uh, the Wurmp. We can talk about whether or not he usually has enough soul or always goes for that fireball and just didn't realize. Um. And what else? What else really happened this race? We had, we had some trouble from Blue and Green Path, but honestly, that's not... 
I mean, you missed a fireball skip. That's not too much to talk about. Um, the one cycle. One Hello. cycle. Hello, Hello welcome. Great GG. race. That was fun. Yeah, it was a great run. Yeah, Ferris, that was that was that was amazing for me. And both of you were not too far off of your PVs, but oh, Ferris, you would have come so close there if not for maybe that abyss climb. There's a little yeah. bit of nerves at the end there. Yeah, yeah. unfortunate. But still re up you that fifty one oh seven. Yeah, 5107 is a great time. Um, it would be about 10th place on the leaderboards too. Maybe just barely, uh, barely in 11th, but it's 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 such a, it's such a great time. It can't be overstated. Yeah, um, you've been great. I was watching a lot of the um, the race actually, and uh, all I saw was just zoom in. <laughs> so much time. like the depth. time difference keep raising. <laughs> I mean, Blue, at least in the early game, you actually kept track uh, with Ferris pretty well. Even after Green Path, you were like saving time every split. But yeah, um... I got, I was, I don't know why. I, I, I'm not really happy with myself this run because like I practiced, I de rusted this category today and I PB'd by like 30 seconds and I was like, yeah, I got this. And then <laughs> I go into the race and like first thing I throw like, 20 seconds in green path and then i missed the two cycle or, or the one cycle uh and then i i have a bad hornet fight i um i miss all the uh the headbang attacks on broken vessel just a bunch of crap <laughs> really the only thing i'm really only happy about is the abyss climb it feels like and i guess ismus was pretty smooth as well the rest was just not very nice i feel like that but abyss then... climb was immaculate. <laughs> I, I loved it. It was, it was really good. Yeah. Also, like, let's be clear. Finishing with a fifty-two puts you in, you know, one of the that's one of the best race times of this tournament. You know, not not the very best, but you know, give give yourself a little bit of credit for that. Yeah, for sure. It's like I'm more disappointed in myself because I knew I could do better if I just hadn't made like a couple of stupid mistakes. But yeah, then, you know, true. everyone, not everyone can have, like, their best day every day. So, like, this was just not my my day for tournament races. And that's fine. That's how it is. <laughs> I'm just glad I could finish this run. Because last time was a disaster. <laughs> I'm glad we got a little bit of redemption there, then. Yeah. Um, speaking of small mistakes, first, uh, I have to ask about the Wurmp. Do oh, you... Sorry. That do was usually, so scary. Do you usually fireball it there? Or do you usually do, do you not mind not having a enough soul there for that? Or no, usually I don't mind, but I don't know why this time I was like, okay, I'm going to fireball it, and I had no soul, so I was okay. Let's do oh, it like no. every time, and that was so scary. And the sea dash in the long room after was even more scary. Yeah, that and was. I saw you. Jump I tried in. to play safe. Like I stopped my C dash, I fireballed, and everything went went, uh, <laughs> went wrong. And but no, please. Oh, I'm but, glad you made it out of there alive. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah, pretty. The Isma section can definitely just kind of screw you over sometimes. It's pretty funny because my run is the opposite of uh, Blue's run because everything. I'm really happy with everything except his mind the climb. That's <laughs> the two parts I really missed. Uh, Hornet 2 was really good. I'm so glad that Hornet 2 went that well. Strong new race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great Hornet 2 fight. A really good one cycle. Able to uh, catch all of the, the movement, the finer movements there. You even got perfect RNG on that. The zero called out. Yeah. My, I think my uh, my my one cycle, what I did was I fireballed slightly too early, just a fraction of a second too early, so that like the second, it didn't push Umu back in a way that the second fireball would double. So it just think... ended up being that awkward kind yeah, of. Yeah, I actually think the first one, hits. the first one didn't hit at all. 
Oh, I think oh, that's even early. worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was curious because I had to do so much damage. I almost missed the two cycle as well. Because like yeah. there was so much damage that I needed to do that I apparently missed the first cycle. And I was like, where is this coming from? Yeah, yeah. That that first fireball I said did did look like it completely missed. And yeah. what was is Umu? Do you always Umu lure Umu that far to the left? Because we were we thought it was a little Umu was a bit low and a little bit to the, a bit farther yeah. left than we usually see him. What what I was thinking in the moment was that as I was going down, I thought Umu was a bit low for my liking. So you know when you're when they're doing the the third attack and you're standing on the bottom platform, right? Mm -hmm. Um. I was like, there's only one way I can get Umu to not go straight down to me and then have to go up again and be, like, stuck in the platform or be too short, you know? Right, and so, so you jumped around So I left. jumped slightly left to try to, like, arc Raising. the path, I guess. Mm -hmm. And Umu just ended up really far left, and I just had to deal with that, and I didn't do that successfully either. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you did make it through the race in the end. You got a pretty decent time. Um, really liked the Hollow Knight fight from both of you, I think. Ferris, you got the scream skip there at yeah. the end. That was great. I art. was not a fan of the RNG THK gave me. Like, <laughs> every time in these races, when I do THK, the last time was just, just parries. This time, THK did not stop dashing, which is the worst attack. And, yeah. like, I had to deal with that, and it was awful. Because even in the second phase, they just started dashing back and forth, and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna have a fast fight. <laughs> if I bring up my splits, I probably lost, like, a really good amount on THK. I'm actually really curious. Um, let me let me switch layouts. I, do I think lost you were... well, six what seconds the on you THK, had. but I golded both Abyss Climb and Shriek. Huh. Nice, that's nice. Any, and the rest any, was just time loss. <laughs> were there any golds from you, Ferris? Because your early game was so good. And honestly, uh, blue from you as well, matching him for several splits. You got you got a 29 VS, right? Yeah. <laughs> Insane. That's really yeah. crazy. I, I golded D-Dark and Monoman, so Umu. But I think it's because of I, the, perfect, the perfect RNG I got. I mean, yeah, and uh, you you did some movement. Uh, Zero called me a boomer for not knowing the C dash in and then dashes in the later room. Uh, so you you know you had the 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 best movement that you could have there as well. So uh, it was really everything coming together for you. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm gonna make top sixteen. I think I might have a chance still, depending on. Um... The, the scores of my opponents in these first five rounds. Uh, but either way, <laughs> if I even do get in, I'm gonna face a really, really tough opponent in the first round, so I'm probably gonna end up going to loser's bracket almost immediately. Which, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, in my reading of it, you you qualify, I think. Ooh, nice. Uh, but this Smash GG thing is... Uh, bit weird to read. I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. Well, I will be happy to see both of you there. Um, if that is indeed what happens. And uh, I, I hope you get a chance for a rematch or something to lift your spirits here, Blue. Yeah. I, I, do. Yeah, I feel like just in one day having improved my PB... So... My PB that I got today in practice, or de-rusting, whatever, uh, it was a 30 second PB, so I have a I have a 5155 now. And that one had an Umu that got a 2 cycle and an extra attack, so I lost like 30 seconds there. So like, at the moment, I think if I just don't like do anything stupid, I'm probably just capable of something akin to a low 51 and possibly a high 50 if I actually practice. Uh, but then I would have to put in a lot of time in this category, and at the moment I'm running 112 and all that stuff, so I don't know if I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'll see what I prioritize. 
But it feels good to know, like, that I'm actually capable of improving quite a lot. Alright. Well, I think we're about ready to wrap it up here. I think our audience was quite pleased by this race from what I could see. So. Uh, actually, Ferris, I have one question for you, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, I was just curious, since... Since you're confirmed to have qualified now, is the which uh, other qualified player are you most? Would you be most excited to have a race against? Uh, don't tell Murray, but it's probably him. <laughs> Let's, yeah. That would the be battle. a really hype match. Yeah. The battle of the bagger. Sure, yeah. yeah, both of you guys have around this very similar PB times, right? Yes. This time is 50, 38, I think. Yeah, so within oh, 10 wow, seconds yeah. of each other. And we saw how consistent you can be, especially in that early game. It'd be, it, it'd be amazing. It'd be amazing for sure. But uh, in any case, thank you uh, to Zero for jumping into the comms here. Thank you to the audience for just make it fun to watch Rixie in for timing as usual and uh thanks to both races as well as well as the uh the speed gaming people who managed to to sort out the uh the time issues and find us a channel to oh. host to run on yeah thank goodness last it's... second i feel like it's really nobody's fault when a race yeah. tends to go a little bit over time so to have the speed gaming people be able to account for that and give us this channel here Quite brilliant. All, All right, right then. Yeah. Good we'll night, everyone. Up. Good Have night, everyone. Good night, and thank you again. GG, Sparrow. GG. <laughs> you played really well. <laughs>